You know what they say about me? I saw. That's right. We watched From Dusk Till Dawn this week on The Movie Gap, the podcast that has you scream. How have you not seen that? 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 Welcome to the Movie Gap. I am your host, Chase Austin, and as always, the tidy man who appears in three parts of my life constantly, Bryce Perkins. I'm a gangster, but y'all knew that. That's a Snoop Dogg uh, line. Oh. So. Any, any particular reason? Well, I'm a gangster, but y'all knew that. All right, so oh, that's fun. So that's it. All right, well, um, before we get into this week's episode, uh, welcome everybody to the first of our spooky movie, scary thon, Halloween, October. I am fucking fright. I am. I am terrified. I've been on edge. Been on edge ever since the first of the month. Unless it is the first. This I forget. is a scary, scary month. Yeah, so I am so spooked. Uh, as as we do spooked every year, we are, we are going to be doing horror films for the whole month, and we got uh, a couple of good ones for you lined up. This one, of course, the 1996 uh, Robert Rodriguez seminal classic, cult classic, From Dusk Till Dawn. Um, Bryce. Yeah. Before we get into the film for this week. Uh huh. And this is quite a film. Yes. Uh, how have you been? What's going on? I've been good, my friend. Thank you for asking. I'm, my uh, fragrance line is is really coming together strong. Oh. Much like my fragrances. Yeah. They're yeah. very strong. Yep. And No subtlety in the fragrance. No, not at all. Um, no. no, the fragrance is meant to grab the attention of the, of the whiffer. <laughs> the whiffer? <laughs> yeah. All right. I like of that. the one that whiffs. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so um so men, uh be on the lookout for that. Um you will be uh partnerless no more once you start using my fragrances. Uh and then also I do have that uh the one, the odor, the odor of Chaz, uh that that's meant to be used as a uh, that makes dogs deter- bite you deterrent uh for your dogs. Uh, to keep them from chewing things. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Um so I have all that going on. But uh so keep an eye out for that. I have another I have one that I'm working on called Cheech's Bleach. Uh it's called Cheech Bleach. I love how the names of these fragrances are not at all what fragrance names sound like normally. Well, it's a new but, it's a brand I I'm running a new game. A new right? game. I'm standing out. I'm I'm revolutionizing the 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 sniff game. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The smell game. So, Cheech Bleach, uh, that's coming out. Uh, that's that's one I'm working on right now. Uh, it's uh, so powerful; it'll keep you keep you uh, safe not only from these Rona hoes, but uh, but the Rona itself. Oh, dude. Yeah. Is this FDA approved that that this will prevent you from getting? coronavirus well jury's still out on the fda thing, <laughs> <Jury>. <laughs> but i don't think it's illegal for me to say yes it is it 100 percent so, is illegal i'm just for gonna you go to ahead say, and say yes say it, it is. is fda approved yeah yeah because okay. it will be it's not yet but it will be so i'm gonna go ahead and yeah. say yes that's i not mean illegal, is this is even it? like FDA, that's not illegal is your fragrance even fda approved for like human consumption or, what do you mean? Who eats fragrance? Well, or you know, on the skin. This guy over here. You're trying think, to trip me up I with think, your words. I'm pretty sure you have to get FDA approval before you can put out a clone. I could be wrong. Well, like I said, but I don't tend to be. Like I said, I don't test on animals. I barely test on humans. 
I honestly don't know what most of these things smell like. Oh, that's right, because you don't have a sense of smell. No, I do. Do I not? I don't Is know. Is that something that we did? No. Okay. Um. Yes, I don't right now. I know I don't smell very... I don't have a very strong sense of smell. Right, I know. Yeah, my so wife I, is always like, you know, you don't smell that? And I'm like, smell what? And she's like, the your this book. flavor that yeah. I'm cooking. And I'm like, I smell like... It smells cold. She's like, how do you smell it? Like, it smells I cold? Smell, yeah, like I smell like... I smell in temperature a lot. Like I know what like, like cold <laughs> smells like. I know uh-huh. what like hot smells like. Yeah. You know? I mean, I can smell. I just can't like smell. Yeah. You know, you know how like some people need glasses to see better. If if they made like nose glasses, that's what I would need. Like I have a sense of smell. It's just not very good. You is know, that, is that is that one of the functions of a CPAP? Is is sort of nose glasses? Does it help you smell better? I don't know. I mean, After it helps me breathe better. Sleep, yeah, and that might be one of the things that is affecting my smell. Is the CPAP oh. like dries out my sinus or something? Okay. I don't know. Uh, any of our doctors? <laughs> yeah, any, any, I like that. Yeah, any, any of the any, learned doctors yeah. that listen to this podcast. <laughs> there, we know there's a bunch of you. Yeah. Uh, are you know, Are you going to take those uh, sunglasses off? Because the sunglasses with the mask, it, it's it's like I'm doing this podcast to no one. I, mean, I, I can see no reaction. Chase, I said it at the top of the fucking show. You, you, you know said that you I'm suck. A You're right. You said you, said you know you that suck. I'm a gangster. No, after that. That was what Cheech said. All right. At the top of the show, I said I'm a gangster, but y'all knew that. And so you know that, and you know that that's, this is just me doing my thing. Man. You know what I mean? So, okay. Um, so that's a no? Yeah. No. <laughs> I can't look. Here's the thing. I was working on, was working on Cheech Bleach. And I got a little bit in my eyes. Oh. And so it's kind of the lights are a little intense. Okay. This, this is literally the dullest the lights have ever been. This was a week ago and, you know, you know how it's like sometimes when you get hurt, it gets worse before it gets better. I'm going, I'm no, I'm very much going through a it's gotten way worse phase. Well, that's not but that good. just means it's about to get better. No, that generally, especially that, with eyesight, and that is FDA approved. No, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure with eyesight, if it's getting worse, it is not getting better. It is hard for me to see a light at all. Well, that's because you have sunglasses on inside. No, no, no. If I took these off, it would be like reverse Cyclops. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's not From hard X-Men. for you to see light. It's painful for you to see light. Yeah, that's what I meant. See, words have meaning, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, they do, and they hurt sometimes, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish I could feel anything, but it's like I'm talking to a robot. I see no human emotion. Maybe I'll take them off for you, just for you. All right, later we'll see. Fucking Bryce. Um, but I refuse to take this mask off because I care about you, and I'm trying to keep you safe during a pandemic. I, you know, I appreciate it, especially now that the winter days are coming. It's getting colder out. Yeah, the virus your, will travel better. Get your flu shots now. Get your fucking yeah, your flu shots and I just got mine. Tests. I just got mine because did you really? Yeah, I don't fuck around. September first. No, oh, you got yours a month ago. Yeah, ish. No, actually, I it's it's by the time this airs, I'll have gotten mine, but I really haven't gotten it yet. But I'm just saying that so that I now in. Because oh, so this is in the better? future, so now I have to get it, otherwise I'm a liar. Yeah. But I'm not a liar, so I'm a truth teller. So if I told the truth in the future, then in the past I did it. It's like uh, Bill and Ted. Much like how I am able to legally say my fragrances are FDA approved because I know they will be. Touche my good man. Even though the jury is still Touché, out. Touche my good man. Thank you. Um, That's another fragrance we have coming out. Touche my good man. Chase is touche. <laughs> Did you think that was going to rhyme when you said it? No. <laughs> but uh, Chasse's Touche. It's closer. <laughs> closer. It's closer. <laughs> we can workshop it a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. You are half partners with me on this. You, yes. You know, don't forget. Wait, does that mean I'm, I'm monetarily invested? Or I just like reap whatever benefits could happen? Uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it. It, is, it does mean you're 100% responsible for... Okay. Any fallout from it, though, that's for that's sure. not great. Yeah, but so. you know, if by some act of you know God or Satan or whatever, 
this actually does make money. Or vampires. Yeah, or vampires. Yeah. This does make money. I want a part of it. Yeah, that's how that always works, right? You'll be thanking me, well, Chase. It's, it's like you I said. You may be behind bars, but you will be thanking me. It's like I said, as soon as we started this podcast, I was like, we're going to do this, Bryce. And anything that happens, I want you to do one thing. Mm-hmm. Show me the money! <laughs> yeah. What about, didn't you do a, weren't you going to do an edit where it was show me the cock? Show me the cock! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, you already had that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. I had that one when we did that episode. Yeah, that's right. That's ago. right. All right. Well, um, yeah. So that sounds uh, that sounds exciting. I, I look forward to hearing more about this. Maybe there's also one other thing. Will you to... will you debut like the ads on the podcast for us? I whenever that that comes around. I know you're you're far away from that stage. I mean, I have some offers from bigger podcasts, but I think I could maybe squeeze one in for okay. you. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe we won't be the first, but at least at least part of it. I'll think about it. Yeah, okay. I might, have, but my the brand needs to go to bigger things. Yeah, bigger, well, bigger I mean, things. we wouldn't we wouldn't charge you to play the the ad. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but you know, to three people, it better be free. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> way to way to punch down, Bryce, or I guess punch laterally. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Punch myself. Yeah. Right. Um. Well, yeah. No, I'll deb- I'll be debuting. I'll, I will. I will. Okay. I will debut things. I will debut commercials. I was hoping you could help me uh, direct and edit them. Oh, too. absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Great, great. All right, I look forward to it. But I do have one more thing I need to air out. Oh, before we okay. get going. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I asked to use one of your charger butts. Yeah. To uh, have my phone charging. Yeah, I remember. While we were, and then you while took we it home recording. with you. You took it home with you, and then I texted you. So you said. I was like, did you take it home with you? And you're like, oh, no, I'll bring it back. And then you did. That was after one week. You did. And then uh, you didn't use it again. Oh, you went all I, the way back. Yeah, I went all the way back. Okay. And then I used it again, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, well, we were using it off and on when you, we were filming with your iPhone. And then you and said. you kept leaving it here. Yeah. You know. And, and, then, and then you couldn't find it when you the, needed it one yeah, day. For the new, and, the new And light. so you text me accusing me i just asked i was like did you take that butt again on accident you know like did you did you happen to take Uh the butt i said happen to take but i read behind the lines i wasn't saying what you were really saying was i translated it and chase said you stole my fucking charger butt again you thieving asshole if you don't fucking bring it back next week i'm gonna fucking chop your balls off that's what you meant i did not say that and guess what guess where he found it folks Right next to the fucking plug, sitting on the little thing. Yeah, real nice. I mean, I I, I did look. I remembered Looked everywhere it, except I for the most it, obvious place. Like in my brain, I this remembered guy. it being there. I remember seeing the white charger on the brown t- table, and I was yeah. like, I know where it is. And in my head, it was on that brown table. And so I looked there, Long and then I table. think I also looked here. But it turns out I never looked here until I found it there. Because when I looked there, guess where it was? It was there. Yeah, so I think I looked at both places, and I think the ghost is back in this room, and it's fucking with us. Holy shit, it is October. Yeah. Oh, I just got even more spooked. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this fucking movie. Apology right. accepted. Yeah. Apology I mean, accepted, Chase. Uh, so we can anyway, talk about this movie now. Um, all right, so From Dusk Till Dawn, Bryce. Yeah. You've never seen it. Or you had never Correct seen it. Correct. Yeah. Demoindis. Um why was this one that slipped through the the your movie gap? Why was this one that you had a movie gap of? I don't know how to use it. All right, so this one's that. a little strange. But also, don't forget, I want to know what you knew about it going in. That's right, that's right. So yeah, well, at first, why did you never see it? Um. So, uh, so when I first um, saw it, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't keep it up. Um, all right. It was, it like was that, perfect. <laughs> it was so perfect. <laughs> all right. Um, watch, the, uh, watch the stream on YouTube yeah. for the listeners if you want to see what happened there. Um, but anyway, I... Which, please get the word out on that. Um, that'd be nice. But anyway, um, I this was a, a little bit of a strange one for me because I remember hearing about this one as a kid from other kids. Yeah, so let's walk it back. 96. let them see it. 96, you were what, like eight? 
Yeah. I was like nine. Yeah. I did not see this one when it came out either. Uh-huh. Yeah, this was, I mean, this is a hard R. Oh, big time. Yeah. You know, uh, I, th- I know that I saw this at Brad Bergman's house. Way Brad to, way Bergman. to drop that. Yeah. And um, it was in junior high. And I believe it was on the same night that we also watched uh, Pitch Black, which is also fun. I have not seen yeah, that. Yeah, that's going to go on the list. I think it is on the list. Okay. But I did watch so it this like post two thousand. Yeah, and I've seen it, but I've seen it again since we started the podcast, and I was like, "Wow, this is not as good as I remembered." So I keep pushing it Pitch aside. Black? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was good. The, you always told me that it was great. Yeah, and then I watched it again. I was like, "This is not uh, as good as I remembered." Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's still great. It's sorry, fun. Vin Diesel. Like it's definitely one that I think will be a fun. That's one, one to with do. Vince, Di- but it Vin, is not Vince Diesel, right? Yeah, Vin Diesel. Yeah, <laughs> it is not like I kept in my head. It was it was like Starship Troopers level. And it is it is not Starship Troopers level, but, uh, oh, yeah. but still, it's a lot not of fun. Paul Verhoeven. No, it is not. But what's the oh Chronicles of Riddick? Yeah, now that one's bad. Right, but that's the franchise. But right? the video game is fucking awesome. Uh huh. The Riddick video game. Uh, something about Dark Athena or something. Okay, back like then that the, must have been on PS One. No, it no, was PS2. It came out years after the movies. Oh, so PS2. But it was a prequel to the movies. I think it was on Xbox is what I played it on. Mm. But it probably was on PS3 as well. Anyway, oh, wow. we'll talk about that when we talk about that movie. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, 96, I you know, I saw it probably 98, 99 somewhere there. 99, 2000 maybe. Okay. Um so you heard about it. Kids were talking what did what did you hear? What did you know? What, so I I remember hearing about it? this on the playground, like at recess and shit, when oh, it first wow, came okay. out, or not like when it first came out, but when like they would by be the saying, time it was on like, VHS, yeah, and, yeah, they'd be saying like we, you know, my parents rented it, and you know, and and I have bad parents, so they let me watch it because I'm eight, <laughs> you know, and so they'd be bragging about how bad their parents are. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I remember f- be feeling jealous, like oh man, I can't watch that, you know, my mom mm-hmm. wanted me watch that, but you know, in hindsight. Good parents, yeah. so not not jealous about you know having good parents. I had them, so <laughs> I'm gonna. You know, it's just, not uh, about the parents; it's about no, the I'm parents not knowing. No, I let that bit go too far. It's fine. Yeah. Um. So, um. But anyway, yeah. My mom and dad would never let me watch that shit when I was that old. When yeah. I was that age, I'd have to sneak it somehow, and I didn't have any means of sneaking it. Um. Because we didn't have iPhones back then. You know, you had to do everything in person. Yeah. You know. And uh, so, um, and so it went. The years, the days, the months, the weeks, the hours, the minutes, the seconds. And all of a sudden, went by like a flash. And so then here we are, and now I've seen it. So you missed out on it. And missed out on it, but no, I remember the kids talking yeah. about it and hyping it up, talking about George Clooney, talking about Quentin Tarantino. So yeah, it was my, my first like here's my thing. You like Tarantino? Oh, lo- lo- love Tarantino, Tarantino movies. Love uh, Tarantino movies. Robert Rodriguez, you don't. Really? Didn't, know. I love Robert Rodriguez, but the oh, Sin only City. That, you've seen Sin City. That's Robert Rodriguez. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then there you go. Yeah. yeah so you've and seen that, that and you've yeah. seen Planet Terror. Planet Terror. And that's about it. And then now this. Yeah. And then now this. But like, I loved Planet Terror. I saw that when they did the Grindhouse thing. I saw that in theaters at Alamo yeah. Draft House, Austin, Texas. Shout outs. Saw that with my boy Cena. We had a good time. That's where the Machete uh, trailer yeah. where that came yeah. from. Oh, have you seen Machete? No. Oh, we got to do that. That's no. a great one. Okay. Um, and um, loved Planet Terror so much. Mm-hmm. Had so much fun. It was just such a fucking fun movie theater experience. Um, Death Proof was okay. I was kind of disappointed in Quentin Tarantino, but I get it. It's a different. It was a different feel. It's still a good movie. Kurt Russell is great. Loved Desario. Um, Desario. I just mixed Rosa- her. Yeah. <laughs> Rosario Dawson. Yeah. Right? Jessica, yeah, Jessica Alba. Alba, yeah. All uh, that Clive stuff. Owen. Love Clive Owen. Um, Wait, we're talking about Sin City? I got confused. No, I was talking about Death Proof. Oh, yeah. Those people were in Sin City, not Death Proof. Rosario <laughs> Dawson was in Death Proof. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wait, she was? Yeah, wasn't she? No, oh, Death Proof. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Death not, Wish. Not Death Wish. <laughs> <laughs> not, not death sentence not 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 wish proof yeah not dirty uh, hairy wish not death death <laughs> um but anyway uh loved that one and and so but but see uh, when i was hearing about this movie as a kid the other kids were talking about quentin tarantino was in it because by this time yeah. tarantino 
was all, had already broken out with Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So I remember them saying Quentin Tarantino and me being like, Quentin Tarantino, me no see no mm-hmm. yet. Because yeah. Quentin Tarantino was something and that I still so, hadn't seen. Before we get um, into So it, I was confused yeah. by that, but I was like, what a strange name. Uh, and then, you know, through the years, obviously. Yeah. So what but, else? I, but you, there was a lot of mystery. I knew there was vampires, it, mm-hmm. and I knew that George Clooney and Tarantino were in it. Were in it. But that's like as much it. I didn't re- realize it was Robert Rodriguez until I started watching it. Oh, okay. Here and then I was like, oh, this yeah. is Robert Rodriguez. That makes so much sense. Uh, and that's it. Oh, and I knew Selma Hayek was in it. I'd seen some scenes from the bar. When they were already vampires, uh-huh. like I'd seen Selma with her vampire face, I'd seen a little bit of that. Um, and that's pretty yeah, just it. here and there. Yeah. All right. Well, but mostly um, it was a Tarantino Mino Sino. Yeah. Uh, as an actor, Which is all, all of our faces. as an actorino. Yeah. As an actorino, <laughs> Tarantino Mino Sino actor. Act- Tarantino actorino Mino Sino. There exactly. it is. There yeah. it is. There it is. Uh, I'm just gonna go through a couple of these uh, <laughs> Rodriguez movies. That we haven't touched. Give it to me, baby. Because uh, I think you might have seen some of them. So at this point, he had only done, as far as like films go, he did El Mariachi, which was the first of the Mariachi tri- 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 oh, trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Desperado, he did a year before this. So he did El Mariachi oh, okay. in uh, 92, and then uh, Desperado in 95, and then this in 96. And Once Upon a Time in Mexico came around in like 2000. Three or four or something. Okay. Um, but, but you know what they say about Desperado? That's my song. Oh, yeah. Please don't talk during Desperado. Yeah. And it all comes back to Seinfeld. Anyway. Um, so, uh, I need yeah. a Seinfeld drop is what I need. I know. We need to find some of those. You know, him being like, what's the deal? Or just like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, the bass. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Which is like the, the interstitial uh, yeah, thing. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That or whatever, whatever we do, like a really good joke that like just needs to end this thing. You just, oh yeah, you hit one and it just goes <laughs> like, like like the beginning oh, of Friends oh. where they always do like that stupid joke. Uh, yeah, and nobody laughs at it because of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the faculty, that's a big one. I've heard of it with Usher. I've heard Usher of it. was in that. Yeah, I think Katie Holmes or something. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, it's about the man, teacher. Yeah. It's a aliens in a school. Oh, it's boy. all filmed in Austin. Oh well, put that on the list. Yeah, that's got. I want to do as list. much Robert Rodriguez as we can. Yeah, uh, he did. I mean, he did all of the uh, Spy Kids movies. That was him. Yeah, that he, dude. He has banked. I mean, he goes. He goes back and oh, forth. Oh, that's why Antonio on. Banderas was in those hoes. I bet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and he goes back and forth with like he really because he's got a younger kid or at the time he had a younger kid. Yeah, so he kind of did that for his kid. Yeah, and and he likes to. Are do, the Spy Kids? But was the Spy Kids good? Um, for I mean, a kids movie. Yeah, for a kids movie, does great. it does it, it look was, like Robert Rodriguez? In a way, a lot of the reason okay. he did it is, I mean, you know, kids movies make money even if they're yeah. not good. But yeah. he was also doing it to uh, experiment and get paid uh, to experiment with digital filming. Because like Robert Rodriguez has oh, really cool. come leaps and bounds, ba- or has taken the digital, like he was one of the first ones to adopt digital film, and and did and like interesting things he uses that you could so do much with practical it. effects. Though. Yeah, well, because he likes to marry it. Yeah, you know, he likes yeah. to marry the two, and um, but using digital filming, not necessarily digital effects exclusively, but like shooting on digital, uh-huh. and then you have because you shoot on digital, you could use green screen, green screen a lot easier, yeah. and just edit differently and edit faster. So he's been a big yeah, proponent, proponent of digital film before sure. anybody was using it. Yeah. So that's one of the things he did with Spy Kids. Gotcha. Uh, and then also uh, Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D, which was uh-huh. out in the theaters when I worked there. Oh, was it good? No. Oh, okay. It was a young Taylor Lautner. No way. With Shark Boy, wow. and he has a rap. Is he it's from uh, Austin or something? I don't know. Maybe. Huh. Taylor lost in her. That doesn't work. Nope. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I had to follow you. But yeah, they, you know, and he did uh, Sin City and um, uh, Machete. Yeah. 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 Just, you know. Did he do Sin City 2? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did. I haven't seen that one. It's not great. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not great. Gotcha. Roger but um, oh, and then the, the last one that he did was that uh, Alita Battle Angel, which I watched not too too long ago. It's all right. What the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. It's based oh. on a manga. 
Oh, or or an anime. It's either a manga or an anime. I, I never. Well, the man- the manga is. I know what the I know what the difference is, but I just don't know which the one. The anime is. is the, the and the, the manga is the yeah. And the anime, the anime is, is the, the actually. Right? And actually, the, the anime hen- is the and the hentai is the. the <laughs> well, well, actually, it's like, it's like eight of them. Yeah, yeah. We both are like, how do we do tentacle? <laughs> Oh, classic <laughs> moment, dude. All right, so we've gotten through uh, Robert Rodriguez, and we will talk about him a lot in this. So uh, let's get right into your notes, man. All now right, that now that we're caught okay, up. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Who was that cashier in the liquor store? That is, uh, his last name is Hawks. I want to say Guy Hawks. Guy Fox. No, um, that one's for Ed. Oh, he'll get it because <laughs> he's British. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he, he also loves that shit. Oh, like he loves V for Ditto. He loves the remember, remember the fifth of November. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna find his French English. His he's a uh, he's an Academy Award winner. He won for Winner's Bone, but you probably recognize him best as uh, Danny McBride. Uh, his brother-in-law oh, on Eastbound and Down. That is who that is. Yeah. And wow, then he was an in, Academy Award winner. Yeah, he won for Winner's Bone. Oh, Winner's never. Boner. Yeah, Winner's Boner, dude. Is more like it. More like Wince Boner. John Hawks. John Hawks. John I was Hawks. Right. Um, but yeah, he's great. He's been an. I mean, he pops up and shit all the time. He the whole was time he I was like, I know I've seen this guy somewhere. And did I you didn't. see Peanut Butter Falcon? No, is he? Oh, in that? you gotta watch that. That's good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's in it. Looks like a heart. And he's a, of course, he's a dick. Like he plays like a redneck dick a lot. Really? Yeah. Well, he I plays mean, he such bl- a normal guy in Eastbound and Down. He plays yeah, such a good I know. straight it's, guy. It's, it's kind of against character for How him. How old is Winner's Bone? Uh, two thousand ten, maybe. What that are you was in supporting or best actor? Supporting. And uh, who what's the her, fuck was in that? Uh, that was the one that gave us. Um, wow, I just had it and I lost it. Uh. Uh oh, oh wow, hold on. <laughs> I totally like now I can see her name. Uh she played Mystique in the the young oh. X-Men. And, oh wait, and, young X-Men. Yeah, and uh, mm. uh not uh, Rebecca Romaine Stamos. No, it it's oh my god, she's uh Jennifer Garner. No, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, god, I could I like I saw the word oh, and I couldn't read oh, it. Oh, the chick uh from Jennifer Lawrence from so many things, passengers um, and uh, Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Hunger yeah. Games. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I'm, I'm pulling all these things that like are not her popular shit. I couldn't. Oh, that was so frustrating. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, watch for that you back. and everyone else. I'm gonna watch that know? back and be like, wow. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, well, and then she won for that, I believe. But that she was won like an her, Academy Award. Yeah, and that was her. Or before maybe she Hunger was Games, nom- she might have been nominated. Yeah, that was before Hunger Games. That was her. Wow, she her went winning Academy Awards to doing Hunger Games. And then it, didn't she win for um, Silver Linings Playbook as well? Don't which, ask by me, the way, bro. Which, by the way, this is going to be the craziest thing of all of it. I literally just said Jennifer Lawrence while I was walking up the stairs because downstairs my wife is watching Silver Linings Playbook. Wow. <laughs> so like, I wow. totally so, couldn't yeah. get it. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. By saying her name walking up the stairs, yeah, I lost you it. Lo- it <laughs> went away. You had to reel it back in. Yeah. Um Okay. Well yeah, dude, that yeah, that guy's great. Yeah. Um, he's a he's a which great- I just re- I just realized I just rewatched Pineapple Express for the longest time. I thought that that was Danny McBride from the end of the world, but that's actually Danny McBride from Pineapple yeah, Express. From Pineapple Express, yeah. Yeah, so that's great. That's a good one. But anyway, um speaking of Danny McBride and he's about it down and yeah. this guy and this movie. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kicks, uh, kind of kicks right off uh, with a bang, which I appreciate. Michael Parks. Do you recognize? Did you recognize him? He's the cop. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, You've seen him in a lot of things, but I know one movie that you have seen him in particularly that you hated, and I love it. Oh, he must have been in um, in um, that fucking goddamn piece of shit art school <laughs> film that. Oscar Wilde did. Well, no, what's his name? See, now I'm forgetting all the names. No, it was Tusk. Oh, Tusk. Oh, <laughs> that was the guy? Yeah, that was the old man. No way. Yeah. And he's oh, fucking wow. so good in Tusk. Like, you got to admit that. Yeah, he is. He's good. 
I thought you were talking about um, what's that fucking movie, Natural Born Killers? Oh no, I didn't. I didn't love that movie. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, I think he was in that. Maybe he's in a lot I of Tarantino stuff. Tarantino, in fact, Tarantino, he plays the same character from this movie that he plays in Kill Bill and Kill Bill Two, and uh, that same. Oh, he's a Texas Ranger. Yeah, oh, and he's wow. also in Planet Terror as the same character. No shit. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, that's cool. Um, all which came out after this. God, yep, yep. Um, so yeah, it starts off with a bang. I mean, that opening sequence, um, with, you know, Tarantino with Richie, you know, he's on edge. He's, he's clearly a little, he's got a, he's missing a bolt, you know, he's, yeah. he's missing some nuts and bolts there. And I mean, it, it sets up characters perfectly. Right. And then that whole sequence of, you know, he's like, shoot the bottles out behind me. And then he makes yeah. the torch out of the fucking thing. And torches the guy, and then he gets up, and and they're like, oh, okay. And then he gets up and starts shooting while he's on fire. Great, great scene, like and, great I, um, sequence. And then and then when he lands in the on the fucking you know con, uh, concession, the um, I guess concession, yeah. the, the food and some the of the popcorn, popcorn popping, and then the popcorn yeah. pops. I mean that scene right there, and and just it's a great opener. Yeah, and it's very. I think that's why a lot of people get. Tarantino and Rodriguez confused because they work together, you know, and in this movie particularly, um, because it's got like the the Tarantino kind of script, but it's also very Rodriguez. Like Rodriguez is the more violent of the two. I know that Tarantino yeah. does like Crazy Eighty Eight, like his stuff is violent, yeah. but it's not as cartoony as, right. as this kind of stuff. Yeah. And and Robert Rodriguez is all about like the gags. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when by the way, gags not always funny. Uh -huh. But they can be. It's just, you know, the, the special effects, right. it's always called a gag. Yeah, For gotcha. instance, the flaming guy shooting. Yeah. You know, or, and then the popcorn, the which popcorn, is yeah. funny. Which is funny. And it's fun. Uh, yeah. It's also just fun. And then I love how they're walking away. You know, there's a couple of times where they're walking away from explosion, but they're walking out of the thing as it's burning and then exploding. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's a great opening. Yeah, you know, it is. And it's, it's a cold open. Yes. You know, no music, no title cards yet. Yep, yep. And then, um, yeah, and then, uh, and then it was cool seeing the hostage, the little flash yeah. of the hostage in the trunk. Yeah, um, that was that was pretty neat. But um, but that brings me to George Clooney. This is a f our first George Clooney movie, I believe. Maybe our only. Because I feel like maybe our only. Because feel like you've seen the. I've seen the Batman's. Yeah, and I well the Batman. What really else does he do? I've seen Up in the Air, yeah. weirdly enough. Uh, the Descendants. <laughs> I mean, none of the stuff... I, would not, I haven't seen any of the Oceans 11s oh, or you nothing. Haven't. No. Maybe we'll do one of those one day. They're fun. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, The first one's actually pretty good. But George Clooney, uh, who does he, great. Yeah. He was, like, hugely ER at this point. Right. This is, like, at the yeah. height of his this fucking... Was his, this was his first like. And so real, it's weird that this is a it. movie that he, even Ash was watching it with me, and she even said she was like, "It's so weird that Clooney did a movie like this." Yeah. Um, well, it was his first. And I forgot it was at the height of his ER popularity. Like, yeah, he, it, he was like at the top. It was his first uh, movie. Ever. Um. Besides, uh, he did uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or like Return of the Killer Tomatoes or something. Uh, but like I mean, when he was like. like a struggling guy, like what, yeah, and like, just the, like a. It, it, let me. I'm gonna find it here. He did a bunch like of like, a pretty TV boy movies. or something. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. I'll find it. But yeah, for the most part, he did TV shows, TV movies. Uh, Return of the Killer Tomatoes for, in '88. Uh, that was a an actual movie, but it's like a, it's a schlocky, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like this, but mm -hmm. that wasn't ever like super mass release kind of thing. Yeah, and it's a sequel. So gotcha, but um, this was his like first starring actual film role. Wow, this was mm -hmm. it's wow. That's and so weird to think. He did about. this. He fucking did this, and then uh, then he got one fine day, and then he got fucking Batman. Yeah, like this right. launched him into I mean, Batman, film. Batman. No, this didn't launched help. him into film. Right, right. You know, yeah. But yeah, I don't yeah. think they would give him you know the doctor from ER, Batman. If he didn't have like, right, you know, right, no, absolutely, and it's just such a weird role for him, though. I mean, yeah, because he's you know a bad but, guy, but he was great. I mean, and he pulled it off. Yeah, and he's and playing he, a bad guy, and he plays bad. Yeah, absolutely. You know, him and absolutely. him and Tarantino, their characters, you know, 
no. not no, nothing really redeeming about yeah. them at all. The 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 closest thing you get is that uh, Seth George Clooney's character has like he he's a bad guy, but not out of his way to be right, that. You know, right. it, like but, he's not just going to kill people, but Richie's like is. a psychopath. Yeah. He's not a psychopath where Richie is. Right. Like right. he doesn't want to kill everybody, but he doesn't care if he does. Right. Right. You know, and he's got anger issues obviously. Right. And uh you know, probably some alcoholism and <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You know, just him, like getting pissed off at the the guy after it's all said and done. He's yeah. like, I'm going to drink this whole bottle. Yeah. And I'm going to go beat the shit I'm gonna out of him. Go smash it across his fat head. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I mean, but he did great. I mean, to yeah. go from playing, you know, stud good guy doctor on ER to playing like this absolute asshole, um, and then that that just does yeah doesn't fucking care what the fuck he does in this super gory gritty film. Yeah, that I I doubt fans of ER at the time it's not were this, yeah. yeah it's not their genre. I mean, you know? I know that I know that ER was was super popular with everyone it wasn't just you know i feel like gray's anatomy is more of a girl show right but you know and then also the the television landscape was different yeah you know, there, it was everybody just kind of watched everything so if er mm -hmm. was popular men and women watched it you know but yeah the the women who loved him on er would not go to see this movie right i know so it was just so strange and then he had that tattoo which was badass uh, that was his uh, addition to the his film he real asked, tattoo no <laughs> no. Did you see Shia LaBeouf got a real tattoo for like an entire for which fucking one? chess oh, piece for a, for, for a new movie that's no. about to come out? I, I believe like it. an entire chess piece. Yeah, no. Um, George Clooney he uh, he saw a movie called Once We're Warriors. Uh huh. Once We're Warriors or Were Warriors, uh, and it's about like Samoans. Once so, like, We Were Warriors. Yeah, it was, but it had like uh, you know the tribal, the Hawaiian tribal yeah. tattoo, and he was like, "That's cool." I yeah. want that for this character. Oh, so he appropriated like, a Samoan yeah. culture. When we're Rodriguez, well, and then, like after this movie, like those tattoos took tribal the fuck off, <laughs> tribal dude. tattoos really took yeah, off. Yeah. I don't know if it was like because of this movie right. or just you know the because they look cool. Sort of thing. But yeah. like, yeah, this was this was before, roughly before, like that was a huge deal. right. Because that was like late nineties, you know, before early Ed 2000s. Hardy. You know, yeah, definitely before and, Ed Hardy, and so. And now you can't find a dude wearing Ed Hardy without having a tribal tent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say it certainly probably had an influence the way it went up his neck like that. And then he took this shirt yeah, off and it was all, down, all the way his down his arm. That was tight. I mean, it looked badass. I was wondering if you were going to be like, what a dick. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean like, not, yeah. look, it, it looked awesome. Well, it looked tight. Yeah. And one of the things that um, I would get it. One of the things that Clooney said when he was watching like you know, this movie and and seeing parts of it that you know, Robert Rodriguez, you know, filmed that he was talking to me, he goes, "Man, I look like such a badass in this." And he he goes, said that, yeah. And Robert Rodriguez goes, "Yeah, I know. That's why I filmed it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like I, I can make anybody look like a badass with this camera. And that really, it's one of those things. What's that, the camera? No, just the way he does the camera, the way oh, he shoots I see. things. I see. Yeah, you know, the way he frames it, the way yeah. he gets the composition. Yeah, it. He knows how to use a camera. Yeah, you know." Like this movie shot. He knows how to work that lens, yeah. baby. This movie shot with somebody who just kind of, you know, half asses it. Yeah. Would not be as entertaining. No, of course not. Like that whole. Fr you don't even get but a vampire I don't think anyone, until an hour. Anyone in. other than Robert Rodriguez could have made this movie as entertaining as no, it is. No, it's a vampire movie with vampires don't show up until the last half hour. That was the. Oh, no, okay, yeah. That was. I was very surprised at how long it took for yeah, the vampires. It gets to show so up. long, and then that, once they do show up, yeah. it's like all in. If you if you know it's a vampire movie going in, yeah, you, you're watching about twenty minutes, and you're like, man, there's like no vampires, and then it goes on so long with no vampires that you almost forget you're yeah, waiting for vampires. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. That I mean, that's exactly how it felt watching it. I was like. I was like, damn, when the fuck are the... Yeah. They're spending a lot of time uh, not <laughs> in family? that bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? Um, uh, and then, of course, when the vampires show up, it's a, it's a big payoff. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it works awesomely. Um, what do you... Are, are there any... So, one thing I couldn't get out of my head is, is uh, George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino... Tino being on screen together and working together just seemed like the weirdest pairing 
of all time, and and I was I couldn't help but think there's got to be stories about them working together. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I haven't really seen anything. I I've watched. There is a full length documentary about this movie called Full Tilt Boogie that uh-huh. was like they were filming while they made the movie yeah. and other people filming it. <clears throat> and Rodriguez, hey, excuse me. Uh huh. Oh, <clears throat> all right. Rodriguez. Uh, is all about documenting and that's one of the reasons he likes digital so much is he can keep the cameras rolling even when they're you know in between takes and just go with it uh, but he's also filming stuff or having people film the making of things and uh, putting together featurettes and you know yeah. documentaries and everything like that uh, in fact this book uh, Rebel Without a Crew is just his journal of him making uh, El Mariachi and just him yeah. keeping it's just all the things that he did during the filming uh-huh. and the production of that. And so it's just he, but they put together a, a movie and I think it came out in like '97. Uh, and I watched it, uh, I've watched it several times, but it's been a long time. But I do know that, um, uh, in that, there's no like animosity between anybody they talk about george clooney being everybody loves george clooney yeah and he's a big uh you know he's famous for his pranks his onset pranks. oh really yeah he's an onset goofster yeah and um you know i feel like uh you know george clooney from what i understand like people like him mm-hmm. he's just a likable guy he never is a dick well, that's not what i was wondering about i was yeah. wondering yeah but then like, did Tarantino he get along with Tarantino? Yeah, like uh, Tarantino I think is famously a dick. But I think if you get his humor, then you yeah. like him and they probably do. Well, you I mean, know? That, you know, to be fair, Clooney seems like the kind of guy that can kind of get along with Yeah, with anybody. Even if they are kind of like a dick, he can just be yeah. like he's cool enough to be like, "All right, that's just you." That's kind of how I feel. Let's, Brad Pitt is probably go. like similar. Yeah, where he's like just that. like, "Whatever, I'm Brad Pitt. I don't give a shit." Yeah, right. <laughs> like yeah. you can be a dick, but I'm still Brad Pitt, so I win. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if they got along. I don't know if they don't. George Clooney has never done another picture with them. But yeah, like, that's what, true. What, el- what else? What have you done? You know, he's his trajectory. Yeah, kind of career just trajectory went, went yeah. a totally different direction. Yeah, absolutely. But um, it'd, be, it'd be cool to see him come back and do some gritty shit again, though. Yeah, I mean, because he was great. In well, I don't think movie, he, dude. He, he, dude, he, he did so his, good at yeah. playing a bad guy. But he fucked his back up so much that he like isn't making movies anymore. From what? Uh, he he heard it on Syriana, like a stunt went wrong where something blew up, and he mm, but he ended up no. fucking up his back real bad. No way. And he got like addicted to painkillers hard. Oh no. Yeah, he's not doing well. I mean, he's he's not dying or anything, but well, this yeah. is all alleged. We don't know. Yeah, well, no, he, he could be doing he's, fine. He's opened up like he's like he said that he almost he seriously contemplated suicide. He was in so much pain, damn, from this back thing. So Jesus Christ, I think he's I think he got some surgeries that are doing doing better, but he doesn't uh he doesn't really work anymore. No fucking so, way. Yeah, I mean it's wow. yeah, it really fucked him up. And the worst well, part that is the worst part is Syriana sucked. <laughs> that movie that? was unwatchable. I never even heard of that movie. Yeah, don't worry about it. Was it one of his like pet projects where he was like, it was a I'm going to make a, yeah. I'm going to say something about the Republicans. Yeah, yeah. It one hundred percent is like war for oil. Uh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. But it was also just so boring. Go ahead, awful. but it's like, yeah, it's boring. I was right? working at the movie theater when that came out, and uh, it was always empty. You know, this is also Katy, Texas. So, like right, Syriana's not right. Gonna, yeah, but. Uh, and like it was always empty except for like maybe three like very old people who would go see a movie and they yeah. would see that. And I remember holding the door open like as it was leaving and like this old man, probably seventy years old or whatever, he goes, You know what? I just have one uh piece of uh advice to give y'all, you know, or a suggestion. You should hand out pillows with this movie because it is a snore. <laughs> and yeah, he really? just fucking walked off. I was like, I love that old man. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yes. Wow. Because it is a snore. Wow. Walked off. Didn't wait for me to laugh. Didn't wait for me to say anything. Just walked <laughs> yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Just give you some old uh, old man yeah. uh, wisdom there, huh? But yeah, so uh, I, yeah, I don't really know how they got, got along together. Well, um, I just was wondering. It's just such a weird pairing. It's just... Yeah. A once in a fucking lifetime uh, uh, pairing, right there. It's just uh, yeah, because you one of those weird. It things. is weird to think of George Clooney also like not only doing a movie like this, but also like 
not being George Clooney, the actor. Right. You know, the film actor. Right, right. And it wasn't, I mean, I guess it was 25 years ago, but it doesn't yeah. feel like it was that long ago. No, not for us, because we were alive when it yeah. happened. But, but yeah. Um, but yeah, fucking, uh, yeah, it was just weird. But he did so good at being a bad guy. Um, there's a lot of, like, little things to get into with this. Um, you said Tarantino wrote it. Tarantino wrote it. Uh, there was, you know talk of him like directing it at some point he kind of so really he wrote it uh to as a favor to uh k and b um uh effects or whatever it's called it's greg nicotero and uh i forget the other guy's name but it's three guys that they do all the special effects and uh greg nicotero now works on walking dead and he's won okay. emmys for that uh but he did it he was like i'm gonna write a movie that is all about the effects and it's all practical stuff and y'all yeah. get to do it and then in exchange for that uh knb did the cutting off the ear effect in reservoir dogs for free oh nice oh, yeah so cool. um and like tarantino just wanted to write this too so yeah he wrote it there was a uh, talk of uh one of the guys from knb directing it but uh it never really uh got off the ground with him and then eventually it just settled on um, Rodriguez. Rodriguez really attached himself to it. Ah, okay. Is this was this the first time Tarantino and Rodriguez had worked together? Um, was this I, like the beginning of their yeah, professional yeah. relationship? Because this was basically the beginning of Rodriguez's career. I right. Mean, like I said, he did Desperado before this. Yeah. But this is the one that you know launched him. Yeah. I guess Desperado did too. Sure. But um, yeah, this is the one that was really. It was like he's not a one hit wonder. Yeah. Okay. You know? Gotcha. Gotcha. And like you know, that's the thing about Rodriguez, though he is, you know, he's one of those guys that you know, allegedly he's an asshole, whatever, all that kind of stuff. But like, what really? Yeah, and, but there's a reason he he can be the yeah. motherfucker writes, and he writes well, like yeah. really good stuff. He directs himself, yeah. obviously. He edits himself. He does the music himself. I saw it was directed does, and yeah. edited by. He does everything. He is a one man production crew. The only thing he doesn't do well is like the business side of it because that is a totally right. non creative. Uh -huh. And, um, but yeah, so like, there, if you're an asshole, but you are it, mm -hmm. you could be an asshole, yeah. you know? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and he does it all, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel that. Um, I mean, look, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I loved the And movie. I've never met him, so I don't know if he's an asshole or not. He's from Austin, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, built a studio, Troublemaker Studios, is in Austin. Oh, that's where we should go to film our uh, commercials. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll hit him up. Yeah. Um, let's see. Juliette Lewis makes a return to the movie Gap yeah. uh, from the unfortunate appearance, which she was great in. And Natural Born got Killers. offered the role because of that movie. So this was after Natural Born Killers. Yes. Natural Born Killers was ninety. She looks younger in this movie than she did. Well, in well that's they're because. making her look younger, and then she's well, playing yeah. a kid, right? Yeah, but like yeah, at the yeah. same time, you look at her I, like the whole time. I was like, is she seventeen or is she supposed to be twenty seven? Right, right. And like, it, I guess it's not important, but like it is important. Yeah, because like she is a kid. Creepiness of Richie too. Yeah, the creepiness yeah. of Richie, and then the fact that uh, you know. Um, George Clooney at the end was like, "I may be a bastard, but I'm not a fucking bastard." Yeah, like, I'm right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take a kid, right? You know, uh, you know, on the run to Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in El Rey, which is just like this tough town of like, yeah. where criminals hide. Right, you know? right, yeah. Um, but I mean, Juliet Lewis. I mean, she knocks it out again. Um, and then we had um Selma Hayek uh making one of her first appearances yep. in movies. Uh, young as shit um gorgeous yeah absolutely um and uh and then you had uh danny trejo young as shit yep uh and danny what, trejo is in had to have all, been one of his first he is in all three of uh the dust till dawn movies whoa there's sequels to this uh there are two sequels and they are terrible are they Robert Rodriguez? No, they are not. Oh, okay. He produced them and got money for them, but gotcha. like, they are shit. Yeah. Uh, one of them is uh, a sequel, or it, like has nothing to do with it. It's called uh, Texas Blood Money, and it's another robbery in yeah. of Mexico, and they come across vampires. And then the third one is The Hangman's Daughter, and that's a prequel uh -huh. to this. It is like the story of um, uh, Santi Santi Santanico Pandemonium, the 
the oh yeah the, what's her name Selma uh, Hayek's yeah, character yeah. <clears throat> and she's like a hangman's daughter and she was a reincarnation of this nine hundred uh, year old blah 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 so, sure was Selma Hayek in it no <laughs> yeah like, but yeah. Uh, it was terrible so, right uh, and then there's also a TV show that was produced for the El Rey Network which was ter- uh, Robert Rodriguez's TV network that he came out with a couple of years ago oh, and I think okay. it's gone now yeah but uh, Wilder Valderrama was in it. As one of the vampires. Really? Yeah, the first season was kind of this movie, and then the second season I didn't see, but it like went further. Yeah, and it was, I watched the first season, and I was like, this isn't very good. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, gotcha. Um, yeah, so, um, but yeah, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo, Cheech Marin. Cheech? Three. Yeah. We got triple Cheech. And at first, <laughs> triple Cheech. Um, I, I, um, I, at first, I was like, kind of tripping out. I was like, "Wait," because you see Cheech be the border patrol person. Yeah, he's the border guard, and and you're certain it's Cheech. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. And Cheech then Marin. and then you see Cheech show up again doing the 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 pussy. Uh, his name. Sale. His name is Chet Pussy. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> Chet Pussy. Chet Pussy. Which there are some great names in this, by the way. Which yeah. actually we got to get into one. Oh, of we the will. Names. But uh, Chet Pussy, and then I started thinking, like, well, wait, was that Cheech, or am I, like, racist or something? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. what's going on here? And then the I'm third like, time, you're like, okay, now okay, you're with, fucking with yeah, me. Yeah, you're just fucking with me, dude, Carlos. okay? Yeah, now I'm like, Carlos. was Chet Pussy even Cheech? Why didn't they just name him Cheech Pussy? <laughs> they never say his name. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of characters in this where they don't, they don't say, say their the name, name. Yeah. but they all have names. Yeah. That's very Rodriguez, too. Yeah, 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 certainly. Uh, but, like, Danny Trejo's name in this is Razor Charlie. Oh, and, and they never a little, say his name. Little factoid: uh, Danny Trejo is in all in, in every, pretty much every um, Robert Rodriguez movie. Robert Rodriguez movie besides El Mariachi. Yeah. He wasn't uh, in oh. that yet because he was already an actor, and you know, Robert Rodriguez was using no names. For right, one. right, right. But um, in every single movie that Danny Trejo is in, that Robert Rodriguez directs or writes or anything like that. He has the name. His name is also the name of a blade. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so and he well, plays- way, way, way. Not except for machete. <laughs> yeah, that not that. <laughs> no, one. that, is, that do you know what a machete is? Yeah, isn't it? It's um, like a machete. Uh huh. But it's Spanish. Oh, I thought. Well, I thought that um, isn't a machete. Uh, um, I got nothing. We can just keep going. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I tried. Oh, I tried so hard. Yeah, so he's hard Razor Charlie and, and got so far. And the, he he's in uh, Desperado and he gets killed. And then he's just in uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico as a totally different character that also is named after a knife. That's what's up. He's in the Spy Kids movies as well. Is he ever named Knife? In the Spy Kids movie, he's Uncle Machete. No, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So. Is he is he ever named Butter Knife? Uh, that's that. That's a joke that's been made. Like, I'm really? Out, yeah. He's like, I'm running out of out of knives. Oh, they're gonna to call me him. Butter Knife. Why don't they just name him um, Knife? What about Swiss Army Knife? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So he's an he's a national treasure. Everyone knows yeah. that. Um, but then we have a guy named Tom Severini. Savini. Tom Savini. Oh, the- Tom Savini. Sex Machine. Yeah, the famous uh, special effects artist. That's what that was. He's yeah. the special effects artist on um, Friday the 13th. There you go. Okay, yeah. and so and on, did he do special uh, effects on this? Uh, I don't. Uh, I know that he is the guy who taught Greg Nicotero everything. Gotcha. Okay, so, now um, it's all coming together. I don't know if he has anything to do with, with K&B or anything like that, but they... I mean, they're best friends. They work yeah. together. They, you know, Nicotero trained under him. Yeah. Nicotero has a cameo in this movie. He is the guy holding the beer bottle that uh, Sex Machine steals with his little whip. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's Nicotero. cool. So they're little um, special effects buddies having a nice cameo yeah. together or whatever. Yeah, and then the the uh, vampire that pops up and bites Sex Machine's arm uh-huh. is the other uh, special effects guy. The oh, B, wow. The B from K and B. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's a little incestuous with the using of the yeah. of the extras. Uh, they, the, and like nine times out of ten, when a special effects guy is in a movie, especially these guys, it's because 
they are wearing or operating a prosthetic oh, or something that is like yeah. it's easier if I do if it. If I do it, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's so, a big part for him to play. Uh, uh, Tom Savini. Yeah. Well, I don't think he did the special effects on this. Well, right, yeah, but, sure, sure. But yeah, sure. yeah, he, he but for, definitely for the special effects. Yeah. But it was a pretty big part, and he got the part. Pretty because, important part. Yeah, and he got the part because they love you know Tarantino and and Rodriguez respect him, and they're like we yeah. want him in this too because we cast him in the movie, and then guess what. He's gonna work on some of the special effects. Yeah, with, right. You know, he's not gonna be able to help himself. Yeah, it's like it's uh, like casting. Uh, it was like in Predator when they cast uh, uh, your least favorite writer, uh, oh, Shane Black, Shane Black. Yeah, <laughs> because they're like, if we cast him, he'll be on set to write, and yeah. we won't have to pay him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I bet you, Tom Savini was like, okay, I'll be in it, but I have to make the dick gun. <laughs> yeah. All right. And they're like, fine. No, that's fine. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. And that dick gun makes a uh, makes an appearance in uh, Desperado or Once Upon a Time. One of them. It's in the no shit. It's in the weapons case. The oh really? Yeah, the guitar case. Oh, full I'll of weapons. have to catch that uh, when we do. Whenever it. we do that. Yeah. Uh, but also, to- two other things about Tom Savini. He looks a lot like um, two people. The one, the main character from Clerks, um, Dante. Yeah. yeah. And also, Brian Halloran. yeah, and also the main guy from Trailer Park, Trailer Park Boys. Oh yeah, yeah. He, uh, that's I've always thought. Uh, yeah. So it's it's not kinda, Dillard, What is his name? Um. Does it start with a. D- yeah. But, I forget Dante. Uh, no. no. It does start with a D though. I think it, it does start with a D. It's a weird D yeah. name. Uh, anyway, but whatever. yeah, he does. I've always thought that when I watch Trailer Dude. Park Boys, I'm like, that guy looks just like yeah. Tom um, Savini. And so it's weird looking at him because I'm like, oh, Trailer Park Boys. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> definitely half his size. Yeah. Um. But um. Darius. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking it up. Uh, Darwin. No, I think um, is what it is. But uh, yeah, no, he is. But another thing, Julian. We oh, way off. Way off. <laughs> way um, off. We had the E N part. Yeah, yeah. The ending. Um, but anyway, um, there's another thing about Tom Savini. His account was re- his Instagram account was recently hacked. Uh, I guess, and he messaged us. Yeah, that's right. On, uh, <laughs> Did you put that together when you were watching this movie? Like, no, I. So I knew. I remember. Getting, I remember seeing the notification. Yeah, because you, I saw that you uh, responded. I responded. To him. Yeah, I remember getting the notification. Let's see. Uh, uh, oh, it, maybe it's um, fucking. Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah. So we got the notification from Tom Savini. I see the blue check mark, and this is one of the rare times where I checked it before you got a chance to. Chance. Yeah, yeah. I see the blue check mark. I'm like, what? And it was one of those. I'm sure a lot of you got this same message from uh, because it happened to, to a lot of people at one at, at at the same time in june uh but this is what the message from tom savini uh says i didn't expect this to take uh, so long to finish but i finally finished it you got to love it i use some of your picks and then second message they're right on top and then it's a link it says three of your pictures in four hours of my time lol instagram click here to load image <laughs> And then I was like, this is weird. Um, Because I didn't know who he was, but I was like, I know this is a dude Chase told me about. And like, it has something. (laughs) Clearly, he's got a a blue check mark. Has something to do with movies. And so I was like, Tom Savini, like, at first I was just really confused. I was like, he did. And I was about to click it. And I was like, wait a (laughs) second. (laughs) Why would this guy be doing this? Yeah. Uh, so I just messaged him back and I said, uh, 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 oh, uh, I think you got hacked, my man. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, you said something like, hey, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was, said, it was oh, my man. Uh, yeah, you think you got hacked, my man. So, um, so I hope he, uh, got that figured out, Tom. But anyway, um, he also is Tom, the Tom that, he's also the same Tom that started MySpace. Uh, so just so y'all know, yeah. a little a uh, little bit of knowledge that you won't get anywhere else. And then we also got fucking. But I was gonna say we've mentioned him before because he uh, pretty much got his start with uh, George Romero, working with George Romero. He missed out on being able to do uh, D- Night of the Living Dead, and he even used he, in, he even was used non- three of George Romero's pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but he did direct the remake of Night of the Living Dead. And he did all of the special effects on Dawn of the Dead, which is one of the ones that we'll definitely have to do as well. Ooh, That's like 
one of the things he's most known from for. From Dusk Till Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, there There's you go. a lot of Dusk and Dawn in these scary movies, I've noticed. It's because it's a terrifying time of... Day. Well, it's when the, cre- the, the creeps come out at yeah, night. From Dusk Or the till freaks dawn. come out at night. But do you know what the term from Dusk Till Dawn comes from? The bar. It said well, we're open yeah, from I know Dusk it Till says Dawn. That, but there, there's, a, there's a reason that they named it that as well. That is what used to be on... Wait, wait, let me guess. Okay. The Bible. The cover of the Bible. <laughs> yes. On the cover of the Bible, it says, it said, the, the holy Bible. fucking Bible from, from dusk till dawn. <laughs> yeah. Right? Everyone knows that. No. Um, King James got rid of it. It was on the, it was on the uh, versions before King James uh, edited it. Yeah. No, it was... Uh, it's uh, a thing that was always on drive-ins. Because drive-ins would be open from dusk till dawn, oh, and they would show that's like, cute. Yeah, movies oh, and that's double so features stuff. Oh and this movie is God. full of references and you know uh, homages, to if other you will, to shit. other of of those shock nature values. The dusk till dawn. Yeah, gotcha. You know horror films, including the the uh, John Carpenter Carpenter nod. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> so, the John Carpenter. <laughs> John Carpenter. Maybe I'm having a series of small strokes now. I couldn't remember oh, things. I couldn't breathe funny. for a second. Then I, that happened. You uh, couldn't breathe for a second? I remember I was choking on oh. nothing. I was literally choking on nothing. Maybe you should get tested uh, for Rona. Oh, um, yeah. but I'm actually, well, no, uh, I've been using the. Now. I've been using your. I'm just kidding. Odors. You don't go anywhere. I that's know. true. That's true. You have been testing my cheech bleach. But um, oh the the t shirt that the the son is wearing it says precinct thirteen. Okay. In the same font from Assault on Precinct Precinct Thirteen, which is kind of a drive in movie that uh uh John Carpenter wrote and directed. John Carpenter. John Carpenter. Yeah. Um. Well, that's cool. You remember that name, John Carpenter? Yes. He did um, Alien 2. Nope. Or he did Aliens. Nope. Uh, Titanic. It. Uh, I know, I'm just kidding. He did, um, yeah, The Thing. And there it is. He's the horror movie guy. Yeah. Um. And, by the way, this movie, and, I also uh, didn't watch this movie because it made me pee-pee-poo-poo my diapers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was wondering where we get that. Yeah. Um. We're in pee-pee-poo-poo my diapers month. Uh, that's weird. So anyway, um, Harvey Keitel is in this. Yeah, I like how we're still in just the cast yeah, list in um, this movie. <laughs> Look, there's a lot. Harvey to Keitel talk about. is fucking great in oh, this he's movie. So good, like that part. Like he's got the pathos of that character. Like that part is written real well, but it's written in a way that you could just deliver it and we get it. You know, yeah. But like you believe him when he's like. I don't love God anymore. Like, you Dude. see the hurt in his face, yeah. you know? I, mean, I thought that line was a little cheesy, but it was a little, like, forced. I don't know. I just, I think it missed the mark. But, like, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was something weird about that line. Can we have a therapy session about it? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but he is great. Yeah, he's so good. He's great in everything, you yeah. know? And then I woke up this morning watching... Uh, Ash had put on Anaconda like at, at one point when we had fallen like and you know when you wake up in the middle of the night and you put something back on and you yeah. fall asleep so she just put on she like found the first thing on Netflix it was Anaconda he I was wake, in Anaconda I wake up but see here's the thing I wake up to to this man's face and I'm like oh Harvey Keitel again I was like it's John Voight. no John Voight yeah. <laughs> I was like I think yeah. it's John Voight they look so similar but yeah. John Voight is also great Anaconda one of my <laughs> favorite movies that uh, has a waterfall that goes instead of down i did not see that part <laughs> there's a shot of the boat like in and there's a waterfall and uh-huh. you know how like waterfalls go down yeah well for whatever reason they needed the boat to go the other way or whatever it was something that happened and they were just like we'll just reverse the shot <laughs> and you can see the waterfall go up watch it check oh, it out wow okay. it's a major goof oh, yeah, it's one okay. of my, it's, we'll i love the that. goofs like that that's hilarious um but yeah, Harvey Keitel is great. Um, yeah, and and you know it makes sense he's in it. He's very you know Tarantino used him a lot. Uh, and I he's love another guy him, that Tarantino probably. I love seeing him in this part because like he's usually such his a career, like a badass or a uh, you know bad guy or whatever, yeah. you know, like taxi driver, yeah, Reservoir right. Dogs, you know all right. this stuff. And in this he's a family man. Yeah, but yeah. he ends up kicking some fucking ass. Yeah, and becomes but, a vampire. 
Um, everyone becoming a vampire, man, that was just so great. I um, love the vampires, dude, in this and they movie. each had their own uh, yeah. like vampire look. Yeah, you know, Sex Machine, you get to see him kind of grow into a vampire, and there's a little a uh, little bit of a sight gag there of him with the hands both behind his back now. And yeah, then, and then and then when um the one dude that I thought was the Rock's dad for some reason. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, no, that he, guy he is famous for uh like drive-in movie style. Right, thing. gotcha. Yeah. Um. You see him like he just got done telling a story. Then you see the hand, the fingers creep up, and then rawr, the attack. Yeah. You know, like that was such a great shot. And then when you see him as a vampire, that was such a great it's like got, his own yeah. vampire makeup. And he's like just the king of vampires. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah. Just like this fucking big, ugly, scary looking motherfucker. And, and Harvey Keitel's he got like the the wide mouth. Yeah, like thing. Yeah. yeah. They all look. Great. Uh, and like all of great. the old, like you could see like the different ages of yeah, the vampires. Yeah. Like even when the the dancers first turn. Yeah. When they first come out, you have the one that's still young, where her where, where her, her body is normal, yeah. and her titties are fine, and then the other one comes out with like <laughs> She's saggy, all droopy. Fat. Boobs. It has the yeah, yeah. An all old age yeah, like, like lizard almost. Like they're gross. all turning into like snakes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And then when it's like just filled with like totally naked vampires, the ones that come in as bats. Yeah. And like it's it's when. Uh, they all get into the like the main group gets into the back room and uh, Harvey Cattell is stuck underneath the the um, the bar. Yeah, you know, and he makes that bat out of the shotgun. Yeah. Which, oh God, we got to talk about weapons in this. Yeah. But when he stands up and they're all like those naked looking, like you can look, they're all individually Different. sculpted yeah. makeups. They have character. Some it's, of those, it's so some cool. Of those, uh, the the look though kind of look like you know also kind of like Star Trek bad guy aliens yeah. too yeah. and I'm wondering if there was some cross um I don't um, know I'd have usage to... or maybe they got some, well I think I mean they, some from you know they some made of them were all, looking a little Romulan but... or not Romulan um yeah I was looking it was looking like I was seeing some Cardassians out there you know what I mean I, I but doubt just more fucked up yeah I doubt that they used any actual like prosthetics or anything from that yeah. but you know the further in the back you get they just use like small, like the same ones over and over again, and the, you know they put less detail in them because they're not what they call hero uh-huh. uh, makeups. Like hero makeups are the ones that are up front and have a specific thing. You got yeah, hero makeups, right. you got gag makeups, right? And then you have just like the filler, the crowd. Yeah, right. So, right. Um, and those are usually just full on rubber masks that they pull over. Yeah, right. With, know. without any detail on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah but they were so some, great. Let's talk about the weapons. The though. fucking uh, cross I mean, yeah, shotgun. How many different was ways so they did good. things? The cross and then the shotgun. Super, he opens up the cart and it's full of super soakers. Yeah, like, that's and fucking condoms. Hilarious. And then he, and he's yeah. a fucking priest, so he blesses right, the water. Blesses the water. Yeah, and then um, and then you know, funnily enough, George Clooney's was the weakest one. I thought. Like, I know it's the you have most get, badass sounding, but you're but like, that it's sucks. not practical. Yeah, yeah, you have to get close, and then what if it gets stuck in there? Yeah. It's just not. It's not good, and but also it, it is cool to have a jackhammer with right, a stake with a in it, fucking stake, but not not uh, not good for practical usage. You yeah. can easily get ganged up on and and eaten with that thing. Uh, you need a more of a spray, you know. You need more a spread, of a yeah a spread shot sort of deal. They needed a sh- well. He had the shotgun, but that fucking gag where he blows the hole in the dude's stomach and then he yeah. puts it in there and he can't get it out, so he just starts fucking yeah, uh, yeah um, what do you call it, cocking it in his stomach with, yeah. and shit. That's and then so shooting cool. the guys, and his fucking, face is just like, oh, like Whoa. fuck, yeah, oh, that was so great. Oh, and I love the the ripping out of the heart, the, heart, the yeah, yeah, black yeah. beating heart, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom Savini just comes up and he with goes, a pencil, Boink. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, there's great. just so much. Uh, it, it gets so many great gags in it with the, right. when he when he ganks the uh, the one vamp on the. Uh, co- uh, the, not like the pool table and his eyes roll out and roll into the pockets. Yeah, like pool balls. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, I must have been taking a bite of my sandwich or yeah. something. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of gags like that, and and there, it was no holds barred with with the with the gore and how far Robert Rodriguez was willing to take it. Yeah. Um, and it was great. I love the cut that. to the it was band, and like all really of a sudden, fun. the band is make is playing instruments made of dead people. Oh, the band! That's what I was gonna say. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. Suddenly, yeah, the that guitar of the dead dude. Yeah. I want one of those custom ones, man. With the pro that with was, those prosthetics. Um, it was Tito and Tarantula. 
It's the name of that band. Were they in like Desperado and we, shit too, or something? Yeah, I mean, he's used their music a lot. I think there was some, another movie that we talked about that they were had, a great band. That guitarist was really yeah. good. Yeah, and uh, the um, those songs were bad. That drummer too. is from Ongo Bongo. No shit. Yeah. You're fucking out of here, dude. For real, not, get the fuck out of here. I'm not getting the fuck out of here. It's my goddamn house, bitch. Well, it's fair. Wow, that got really, real. I, I can't I say anything. I can't even. I mean, <laughs> got to give you props for that one. It is your house. <laughs> but um, yeah. So what else? Uh, what else in that stood out to you? Um, those rock band vampires. Uh, totally so fucking badass. Right. The gross. The the uh, oh the uh, the Tarantino vampire the Richie vampire makeup looked badass too. It oh reminds yeah, me, yeah, every, yeah. Every single time I see it, I think Dorian from the Mask. Yes, I that was one of my uh, that Is was one really? of my fucking notes. Yes, yeah. looks like the bad guy from the Mask. Yeah, I was waiting for him to be like, hold on, <laughs> there's always time for kills. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> classic line, dude. And of course. All of the vampires have green blood, or black blood, or black blood, yeah. and that is uh, that is an old trick. And like, that is an old trick to get. Yeah, that is an old trick to get a uh, an R rating instead of an NC seventeen. Oh, especially because they've already had so much blood in the first hour. Yeah, with, like the rape victim and the shootings and. Right, so they right. have all of that. If like, if everybody oh, I in there about that, the fucking fuck. subliminal shot. Yeah. At first, like I thought my edits. shit was fucking up yeah. because it just so happened that it started like kind of a uh, lagging too. You know, yeah. like the stream kind of oh, lagged yeah, yeah, right yeah, when yeah. the and then when it caught up, it started doing those cuts, and I was like, "Oh, is it still fucking?" And I was like, "Oh no!" No, uh, but that was great, man. That's like just one instead of, those things, of it was almost more gory yeah. to show it like that because yeah. it got to and your then, subconscious. And then and you, you see it, you paint the whole picture, like, and your then, subconscious then the is like, rest, oh. "Yeah," and the rest of the scene <laughs> where you see it kind of obscured by Richie, but like you see it behind him. Like you see what was going on in there. But you're like, yeah, I don't need to see that anymore. Right. But yeah, Rodriguez, man, he knows how to put together a film, you know? Yeah. He like, knows how to edit. Yeah. He and it's it's just taking all these tricks that he's learned from watching other things and then just playing with shit yeah, himself. Playing with it. And 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 using different uh techniques in the editing and in the direction and and like you were saying melding them and it and it creates a fresh new thing yeah. you know like yeah. if it was someone else editing it they would have never thought to do that kind of thing and even if he would have suggested it they probably would have fucked it up well and i just you know? like i love he knew the, how to do it exactly like that and, and i love and the simple like the you, payoff was the great. stuff where you see it but you don't like um frost that's the name of the the big black guy yeah. Uh, when he lifts the vampires up, he flips over the table and he lifts a vampire up, and you see him with the the vampire up. And then it takes a shot, like POV, like looking towards one of the the legs of the table, and then it's him dropping a vampire, and then you just see the vampire with it through his chest, yeah. and then it cuts to the next one, and then it pans back, and there's four vampires all yeah. impaled on the yeah, same yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like the little things great, that he does man. where you're like, I saw it all, and you didn't actually but he didn't see, see anything. anything. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great, man. Uh, it was fucking great. There's one last thing I really got to get into here. That, that it's really the only thing that bothered me. Is it the way that Cheech Marin like leered at that poor girl on the toilet? Oh, dude, <laughs> that yes. was I so even, that dude. was that was the creepiest part. Like I know that First, yeah, that, that was, was one of those a, things. A rapist, and it was real creepy. But that was but just gross. Then for him to do it, it yeah, was and like, just like really. You're, and then, like, kept shutting that, it, and yeah. like, kept look, and then smiled that a little bit. Didn't even need to be like, in that there. Is, that is not good. It didn't need to be in there at all. Yeah, uh, that wasn't what I was going to talk about. But yeah, I even made a comment. I was watching with Ash, and I was like, "Oh, no, gross, yeah. dude, what <laughs> the fuck?" Feels- and then Ash was like, "Yeah, are you surprised? All men are perverts." And I was like, well, "Oh, yes, boy. but, <laughs> but, but this character wasn't." Until there's no then, need for there's it. No there's need no for need it at for all. It. You already have the creepy perv. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that was a little annoying, but. Also, um, no, my, uh, I, I, I kind of take issue with the fact that they use the name Gecko. Uh, why? When there was already a Gordon Gecko, unless it was li- like literally an homage to Gordon Gecko. No, I don't think so. But it's like, if you're th- coming up with cool names, use one that isn't already used. Well, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know? I know the Fuller name was, uh. From Fuller House. Which came out. 
twenty five years later, which was impressive. That they, time is not linear. It's a flat chase. Uh, yeah, I, know, I feel uh, that. No, uh, it's a. Uh, it's named after Samuel Fuller, who is uh, one of the primary influences of the whole pulp cinema uh, style. Sounds like you had a good week. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, Alright, well that's all I got We're, we're nearing on an hour yeah. 20 uh, here We got a say, reboot, we I got a bunch say, of shit to do uh, Another throw out of R.I.P. to Kelly Preston Who, she was the News reporter in this and Oh, the, wow And the FBI guy that she was um, interviewing Was John Saxton Oh yeah or Saxon he, uh, That was another one of my notes who, From uh, Enter the Dragon fame And who also yeah. has recently passed away And was in um, Have you seen Enter uh, the Dragon? Nightmare on Elm Street uh, he no, was in no, I haven't. Ocean. I haven't seen that. Oh, we've talked about that. My yeah. fucking god, people! That's one we're doing. Yeah, but not only not only have both of them died recently, it was in the same month, two weeks apart. John Saxton and Kelly, or Saxon, oh, really? and Kelly Preston. Yeah. Oh wow! It was like two months ago. I think it was June. Oh, that's. I thought John Saxon died a while ago. No, nope, it was very recently. I guess it technically was. Time is not a, a <laughs> line. A flat chase. circle. It's all It's all happening yeah. at once. Uh, um, and uh, where did they get those tasty burgers from at the beginning of the movie? Is this a trivia question? Yeah. Did you see the logo on the side of the bag? I was looking for it. I. It's got to be something... Uh, Tarantino related or some yeah, shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, In and Out was it In and Out? It was Big Kahuna Burger. Oh right, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. From uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I've always, been, I've never been to Big Kahuna Burger. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which means I'm pretty much a vegetarian. Right. You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in in uh, France? A royale with cheese. Yeah. You know why? Why? A metric system, man. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have that's good it's good stuff uh oh wait but we will be remiss without uh talking about remiss. one one last thing or whatever I, yeah <laughs> one James last Kermer. one last part of this movie okay uh Looks that like is you're queuing something Cheech, up here yeah Cheech Marin yeah uh I just wanted to get a little taste of his, oh, his monologue yeah. to play the whole thing yeah. We'll get flagged. No, we won't. It's not okay. it's not music. Okay. So um I will see here. This is here the is. greatest monologue in, in modern Alright, pussy, 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 come on in, pussy lovers! Here at the Diddy Twister, we're slashing pussy in half. Give us an offer on our best selection of pussy. This is a pussy blowout. All right, we got white pussy, black pussy, Spanish pussy, yellow pussy. We got hot pussy, cold pussy. We got wet pussy. We got smelly pussy. We got hairy pussy, bloody pussy. We got snapping pussy. We got silk pussy, velvet pussy, nalga hide pussy. We even got horse pussy, dog pussy, chicken pussy. Come on, you want pussy? Come on in, pussy lovers. If we don't got it, you don't want it. Come on in, pussy lovers. Oh, oh yeah. The that only- was great. And also just like so out of nowhere. Yeah. So the- unexpected. Yeah, uh, I, I, I believe- every, every strip club should announce their opening 100%. night like that. And I, I, you know, I believe that. Or should they, though? I, I, I could hear that coming from a Tarantino script, but like I also feel like. They were just like, "Hey, go, <laughs> Cheech, go out there, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, tell us what what's what." But the other, and then the other yeah, one, like, I could totally see him fucking ad libbing Naga hide pussy, <laughs> Naga hide yeah, pussy, yeah, and then Horace pussy, yeah, yeah, che- and go <laughs> pussy, cheeky pussy. Oh, uh, we got then, Cheech the, pussy, we got Chong pussy, and then the other one. The, uh, the attention pussy shoppers yeah. take advantage of our peeny pussy sale. Yeah, yeah. He goes on and on and goes, if you can find cheaper pussy anywhere else, and it, he looks down straight into the camera and just goes, oh, yeah. fuck it. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> gag, dude. Like, I could, oh, like, you man. can't be mad at that because it is done with such great, yeah. with, with such intent, you know, that. It, they're like shoving it in your face like yeah we are doing this <laughs> this is the shot we're doing say something and you can't oh, you know? man, it's great like, I fucking love it. it I love it it must be a Texan thing man I mean 
Uh, I, think that's why I we also get like Robert the Rodriguez I also like so the well. joke where he asks about the beer and he goes, "We have Mexican and domestic." Which oh means, yeah, which means they just have Mexican right, beer. Right. Yeah, it, it was Mexico. like so. It was just kind of thrown in there, yeah. so, and then he just walks away. Yeah, All right. that was um. That well, was nice. um, yeah, that that. I, I, I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit. I'm sure we yeah. can talk about a lot more, but we got to yeah. wrap it up. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I did want to say there were two nice plot points. It was cool seeing, and this is a very important part of the movie that we should talk about. The it whole was cool seeing MacGuffin the, of the the dad turn into the vampire and then yep. end up actually biting the son. Yeah, and then the son getting eaten, devoured by vampires. Um, that was a very cool sequence. Yeah. Uh, that was like that was just like oh dang that sucks. Um, but like it was like good writing or whatever. And then and then the ending where it ended up being an, uh the top of a of a Mayan pyramid. Oh yeah yeah the whole oh time. yeah yeah it goes down yeah yeah that was uh that was really cool. Um, so. that and then spoilers. Uh, then the way that uh, uh Frost talks about being a nom and killing. Uh, yeah, everyone one by one. Yeah, well, and having the the bayonet covered in. Blood because yeah, there. and then the way he dies is uh, 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 what's his name? Jacob uh, shoot like stuffs the shotgun in him, yeah. And when he pulls it out, it's just covered in his blood. Oh and stuff. yeah, so he dies that way. And then also, uh, Sex Machine says, you know, you could knock their heads off, and he yeah, dies and he gets by his getting head knocked off. And he, and he turns, turns into, into that a giant dog. rat, yeah, yeah, the rat dog thing that Clooney was wrestling with, which has. I've always loved it. It's so cool and so fucking gross. Yeah. And it makes no sense. I've never heard that lore right. that they turn into rats or whatever. But right. I loved it until I watched it last night because uh, I currently have a rat infestation in <laughs> in our attic that we're getting taken care of. And so I saw that and I was like, I don't I don't want rats. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't that's funny. That's I don't want it. Is. Um that's funny. But yeah. Um yeah, that was funny watching uh, Clooney like wrestle with the yeah. Uh, but there's such great practical effects. Yeah, we talk about practical works so effects. well. It's awesome. It you, do it, you shoot it right. It's twenty. It's twenty years. It's what twenty five years yeah. later, and it holds up. Yeah, and you you know, know? the problem I think with a lot of practical effects is when the the studio sees a practical effect, they're not looking at it through a camera. They're looking at it like on set. Yeah, and they're like, well, it doesn't look good here. It's like, yeah, you have to put the camera in the right place, and that's the only way it looks good. Right. And in their heads, they're like, well, let's just do doing. it digitally, where it can look good anywhere. And right. Like, but it doesn't but it need doesn't, to. Yeah. And it, so, yeah, it takes away from it. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a whole argument. Yep. A whole other thing. All right. You ready for some numbers? Yeah. And if you think of anything that you want to talk, oh wait, wait, about, wait, wait, wait. I gotta do it. the I gotta do the intro. For the oh, numbers. okay. Did you get a new one? Oh, no. Oh. Give me your number, girl. Give me numbers. Give me that number, girl. What's your domestic? What's your worldwide? What's your weekend number, girl? Butts. Cool. Oh. I like my adding butts to it. it didn't it didn't really do anything? It did fine. everything. So box office budget is nineteen million dollars estimated. Wow, that's a lot higher than I thought. Yeah. Those are a lot of special effects. Okay. And there was there's a whole bunch of like deleted stuff that they didn't uh you know have time for. They had to cut it down. Um like there's also a there was a whole effect where uh Nicotero had to make a uh and I remember this from the documentary, uh th- that one of the uh vampire stomachs opened up into a bigger vampire mouth mm-hmm. and like bit a guy's head off. Mm-hmm. And I remember in the documentary, Nicotero's like walking up to Rodriguez. He goes, "Here's the the gag for the the stomach thing." And Rodriguez's like, "Wait, where was that in the script?" And he's like, "You told me to make it." And he's like, "I don't remember that." And he goes, "I believe I totally made you, told you to do it, but like I don't remember it." All right, we'll shoot. <laughs> like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, go with the flow, baby. And I, there, I've seen like the the deleted scene of that, and it looks pretty cool. But they they cut it because they're like, "This is too much." Really? Yeah. But um, yeah. So nineteen million. Okay. And that is all on screen, I think. I know, uh, uh, what's his name? Clooney got 250000 for making this movie, so. That's it? Yeah. Because he was in, you know, this is his first movie. That's a lot of money for nobody. He in was already getting movie. fucking paid for ER, though. Probably not that much. This is TV in the 90s. It's different. But that and was the number one work. show at the time, and he was the star of it. Yeah, and this is a lot less work. Wow. All right. So, well, that's crazy. Um, kind of opens your eyes up on, uh, you know, 
making money with well, movies you know, and, and it's stuff. also an opportunity for him to break into yeah, and it, it worked out. Yeah, definitely. like you know, it, we take it. Or, or, uh, I'm sure actors we don't because it has nothing to do with us, but actors take it for granted now that film and TV are so yeah flip flopable. Yeah. But back then, back yeah, then if you were a TV not. star, you were a TV yeah. star. That was yeah. it. It was hard to become a movie star, yeah. All totally. right, so opening weekend, January 21st. This is a dump movie. January 21st, 1996. Early to late January movies are nothing comes out. That's where right. they dump it. Right. So, it, you know, people go see it because there's nothing else. I'm going to guess that this didn't even make its money back in its total box office. Okay. Because uh, I don't necessarily remember it being a hit. I remember it kind of being an underground sort of thing. Yeah, it is a cult um, hit for sure. But yeah, so yeah. I'm going to guess opening weekend, 500,000? Uh, 10 million. Whoa. 10.2 10. million. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was way off. Yeah, so it almost <laughs> it, it made about half its budget back. Jesus. Uh, the but gross, that was about where it stopped, right? So the gross of the, the domestic gross, what was it? Okay, well, I was way the fuck off. I way undershot it, so yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna correct. I'm gonna overcorrect, and I'm gonna say it made 137 million dollars. No, box it did not make that. It made 25.8. Okay, so it made its money back. Yeah, and then uh, worldwide, which you've already way overshot your load, so I'm just gonna oh. tell you, 59.3. Oh, it had release other than America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which you know, around the world, it. Some places it would get banned and they'd have to recut it and that kind right, of stuff because it was right. too violent. Uh, and I do know that in Brazilian Portuguese, mm -hmm. uh, the franchise is titled A Drink in Hell. Oh, that well, that's pretty. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. So. Not as catchy of a thing to put on the front of your bar uh, <laughs> yeah. as, as, as from, from Dust Till Dawn. Dawn. Yeah. But, uh, but still a nice uh, title. Yeah. Makes sense. In a Portuguese. So, uh, you, you know, ready? Cristiano Ronaldo is Portuguese. Sure. Okay. Uh, you ready for the, <gasps> oh, reboot. Oh, wait, no. What's up next? That was no, it? no rating. We got to get rating. rating. No rating. Yes. Rating. All right. Here's my theme music. Rate me, bitch. Rate me. Rate my ass. Rate my bitch ass. One out of 10. What am I? One out of ten, girl. <laughs> you know right. what? Like, get like make or, some one legitimate. One through ten is what make I make some legitimate actual music. I don't know. I kind of like ad libbing it though. Uh, Rate me, bitch. I feel like you should <laughs> if you're gonna ad lib it. Like, get some like non just beats. Oh uh, well, I made that beat. I know, but like, get some like don't just do a beat. Like, ad lib it to like some different music Fine sometimes. Chase. Let's, let's add a little flavor. A little thing, all you know, right. like, it doesn't all have but to dude, be rap. It's, listen, it's underground, it's H-Town. Yeah, right? but like, you know. It's H-Town, it's chopped and screw. You wouldn't know nothing about it, man. Screwed up. I, I don't, right. I know. All right, so. Pulled up. What I, is your rating? Let's go. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's tired of listening. <laughs> my rating is out of... Uh, if this was, uh, uh, if this podcast was Dust Till the movie, the, the vampires would already be out. That's true. Um, my rating is out of 10, um, there's so many things out of 10, holy, um, holy water condoms, holy water condoms out of 10, uh, creepy, you know, rapist murderers. No, I'm not going to do that. Out of 10, out of 10 um, sheriffs that want to get tanked. <laughs> sheriffs that want to get tanked. Oh, <laughs> oh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the marshal, he goes, yeah. he goes, no, I'm not going to eat that microwave crap it'll give you cancer yeah uh, give me a whiskey i need to get tanked tonight yeah <laughs> yeah that was good um out of 10 um guy out of 10 um uh, what do you call it flaming dudes out of 10 dudes on fire <laughs> shooting at you I give this do movie... psychopaths blow up or do psychopaths oh, yeah, explode yeah. when sun hits them? Yeah. Those were fucking were they, vampires. Were psychos, yeah. <laughs> um, I give it. Um, I give it. I give it nine. I give it nine dudes on fire right. trying to shoot at you. I mean, this movie is fun. I loved it, man. Yeah. It's a fun movie. It's and great. like, I feel like if you. I, so I haven't seen this movie in a while, like all the way through. Yeah. Uh, 
And I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, before I start watching this, I have to remember that I'm not 13 anymore. Mm-hmm. And like when I was 13, this was one of the fucking coolest things I'd ever seen. In right. My life. Right. So watching it from the perspective of like, I'm now <laughs> majoring in film studies. Like I need to watch this film studies. Like and like two minutes in the movie, like this movie's fucking awesome. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then by and, and, you know you get through the whole thing and then it turns into the fucking vampire stuff and I'm just like. I want to see more. I want to yeah. see more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, um, man, I like nothing is cooler than like guns and vampires and so much titty when you're yeah. 13. <laughs> like you're just like, I love titty. Yeah, <laughs> like I absolutely. see it. It's yeah, all yeah. over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. When you're 13, yeah. 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 For a teenager. Like, uh, like yeah. It's just like you know, you've never been to a strip club. This I, I'd go to the strip club. It's like the grossest, dirtiest thing. Uh, yeah. But all the women are beautiful, right? Which right, is right. like not always the case. Yeah, in a strip exactly. Club. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, no. Yeah. This is one of those ones that you definitely you grabbed the VHS and and you learned how to pause. And yeah, you remembered where to fast forward to and shit. I mean, I remember getting uh, when we first got cable or satellite. Yeah, like, I found out that this was coming on at night. Yeah, and like I programmed my God, this is gonna make me so dated. I programmed a physical VCR uh-huh. to the like tape. to set. I was like had to set the the timer on yeah. the VCR to match up what time of night that this was gonna come on, uh-huh. so that it would start recording and stop recording at the yeah, right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because uh, uh, I was like, I have to have this movie, you know, yeah. because it's so badass, not right. because of the titties, right? But yeah, no, I wore that tape out. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just like. <laughs> Yeah, this movie fucking rules. Uh, but even yeah, as great. even it's as an movie. adult, an adult male with taste, it's just like this movie's still fucking no, so just, badass. Like, yeah, it's badass. It's just badass. <sighs> um, and it's just fun. It's yeah. a fun. It's a romp and a rave, baby. All right. Um, so obviously, then, um, worth it. Or worth it or shit. worth shit. I personally got to give it a All worth right. it, baby. Now let's go into everybody's favorite segment. The plugs. Read. Look us up. Oh on, yeah, give us plugs. <laughs> look us up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter uh, at the Movie Gap. Subscribe on our <laughs> YouTube channel <laughs> at the Movie Gap. And if you uh, are listening to this, you probably already have. But tell your friends. All right, now it's time Please. for the potty break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <after> <laughs> the- <laughs> nice. He's having fun, folks. He's getting yeah. loopy and goofy. But now it's time for the. No, I'm not going to make you do that. Okay. Reboot. <laughs> Recast. All right. Uh, I have Jacob, Seth, Richie, Kate, and then I have a, a, a little extra bonus various vampire thing thrown in. Okay. All right. I like that. So uh, who do you want to start with? Let's start with Kate. Okay. Work up. Uh, all right. So Kate, I have two. Uh, just depending on how realistic you want to play it. Okay. All right. So, like, Juliette Lewis was like 24, 25 when she filmed this, but she was supposed to be like 17, I guess. So I think we, I don't remember if we talked about that on on mic or not. Yeah. How old is she? We Wait, didn't know she no, was. No, well, you, you mentioned, like, is she supposed to be 27 or yeah. is she supposed to be 17? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um,. If she is like, let's say that she's supposed to be that, which is a she's good, to be young, which is a good example of how you can cast older people to play younger people sometimes. And age if is they not look, that important. If they look a certain way, this fucking you know. Me. So, but that being said, I thought Emma Roberts because she still does look like she could play very young. That oh is, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you're going for an actual person who's younger, uh, Millie Bobby Brown. I mean, I just scrolled past her and the go-to at this point. I just scrolled past her and I mean, or you know, or you know, your your favorite, your favorite person, Julia Garner. She kind of she can kind of pull that off. Yeah, Yeah. I think they could make that work. And I've seen her play ditzy before, so I'm sure she could play. You know, not not that I mean, Kate's not ditzy, but she's like. You know, she's she plays it as a child, right? You know, and I think you know. So really, it, it, um, you know, it's just a fun part for for any of them. You know, it's a girl who gets to kick ass, right? Um, and and Julia Julia Garner, what's her name? Yeah, Julia Garner. Julia Garner. Um, you know, she can kick ass. We've seen in uh, yeah. Ozark. You know, so I'm down with that. Uh, I'll go with that. You can go with Millie Bobby Brown. How about yeah, that? or Emma Roberts, really. So. Okay. All right. Um, 
so then we're going to move on to, uh, I got Jacob, Seth, and Richie. Uh, Richie. Let's do Richie. All right. It's going to um, be a tough one. Do you want to go first, or are you looking? I'm looking. All right, so here's my Are you going to try to do a, a current day director that can be an actor no, or whatever? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I'm going just strictly by the, the actual character, which, by the way, um, one of the things I liked about Richie is there's... There's a lot of darkness in him, and he's creepy and and quiet. But then he's also fucking nuts. Like when they're in the bath yeah. the bathroom, and he like, right. like no, and like he's like, dude, not the fucking time. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. But um, Tarantino said that when he when they started filming, he was like, holy shit, why didn't I write any lines for Richie? Like, there's uh-huh. almost no lines. Yeah, and uh, it was like just too late to like go back in and write more. Uh-huh. But I like the fact that he's quiet and creepy and yeah. uh, kind of pretty much only really talks to Seth. Right. You know? Uh, and I thought somebody who could play that menacing with like that kind of creepy look to him and has br- done it before, uh, Jesse Plemons. I like it. And of course, for those of you who like don't right know, at that's, the right age. that's Matt Damon's, um, looks look like alike. Matt Damon's Although uh, he's little brother, he's looking a lot more like me at this point. Right, he's getting he's a little getting chubby, big, but big it's all good. When he came back in El Camino and was supposed to yeah. be the same size, I know that's what I said. I was like, "This is well," because my wife and I were we finally way watched older it. And yeah, was we just finally way watched bigger. it. Well, and it, the very first stuff is is uh, what's his name, Pinkman. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, he looks like a forty five year old man." Yeah, and he's gained like six. Like like probably Six 20, pounds. 20 or 30 pounds. And then, then Jesse Plemons comes on and you're like, ho, 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 ho. He's, yeah, he's a right. hefty boy. Yeah, yeah. And looked way older. Which uh, I was, we were watching Fargo season two that he's on and like he's so big in that too. And I was like, man, I wonder if that's like a fat suit. And my wife's like, who cares? He's hot. And I was like, I see why you're married to me. <laughs> Who's hot? Uh, Jesse Plemons. She thinks he's hot? Yeah, without his shirt on and everything. And I was like, really? I was like, I, see, I get it. Uh, like, that's like, hilarious. We have the same exact body shape, which that's is just funny. like shape, shape. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I don't know, man. I might. I. I mean, I'm. I'm torn, man. I'm torn here. I'm thinking Joaquin Phoenix might be fun. I just feel like that's too small of a part for him. But if you, but you know, this is your dream cast, yeah. Oh, uh, I just feel I'm like, thinking, but he's also too old. But is he though? I mean, I guess he could be the older brother. But I uh, see I, the oh, problem he has there to be is the younger brother. Yeah, but the problem there, and, and you know, you could flip it. He could be older if you want. But the problem with Joaquin Phoenix is Joaquin Phoenix is Jacob's age, and I don't think they should be the same age. I think they should be younger. Oh right, you know, yeah, than yeah, yeah. than uh, the father figure in the thing. Yeah. Um. And I don't. I'm going to say. Well, then I will say with with. Who I have in mind for um, Seth, I'm gonna suggest. I'm gonna say Shia LaBeouf because I think he will pair well with okay. someone that I have in mind for Seth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Shia LaBeouf would actually make a pretty good, good Seth. Seth too. I know, but then I thought of something. And actually, for the for for the Jesse Plemons, I didn't even think about this. the The person I have for Seth, I'm not in love with the pairing of him and Jesse Plemons because I don't see the the brother yeah. relationship. But yeah. you throw a line in there, they've got different dads. Easy. Sure. You know? So it's an easy fix there. Right. But um and I love the like in this one Yeah, with the kid. The kid He's like, like why does your kid look Japanese? He's like, he, he doesn't. He, he looks, looks Chinese. Chinese. But they also never like say he was adopted exactly, or that yeah. his mother like yeah. he might be a different mom. Who knows? Right. Yeah. You know, I mean we do know that his wife but is that dead. Was, it was but it was great. It was just throw a little line in there, yeah. which is what I always say, Chase. Yeah. That's what I always say. I know, and I agree with you on on certain things, but uh, yeah. So agree anyway, they're, they're gonna be lying. They have here on out. Um, and so my uh, let's do Jacob. Okay, yeah. So Jacob, I'm gonna go with Sam Rockwell. Um, not not bad. I think he needs to look older. I think he needs to be almost sixty. So I'm thinking you know, Sam Rockwell is kind of nearing that age. He's getting there, but was I, Kaitel but he, in his fifties, like right? Late he was 50s, like fifty-eight, yeah, almost sixty. Rockwell's I think. probably like what fifty-one, fifty-two. I think he's in his late forties, early fifties at most. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like late forties. But dude, what if it was Tom Hanks? 
Um, I I just. Yeah, I mean, I maybe that might be fun. I feel like Tom Hanks might be a little too old, right? But and he doesn't look as he doesn't ha- look as hardened. Yeah, you know. But it might be. But fun. he's also he's also freshly hardened. You know. So yeah, I'm not I'm not mad at that. Wait, what? What does that mean? The the From, character of Jacob. Is oh not, right, like yeah, he's, yeah. He's not well, somebody who's he been beat look down. As like um, gritty. He's not yeah. as like threatening looking as you know. Tom yeah, Hanks yeah. has a very friendly face. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, so but that would that's why it'd be fun to see him play a badass that yeah, is no, blasting I, vampires. I don't I'm gonna go with Tom Hanks. I don't hate that at all. Okay. My first thought was Brian Cranston. Oh, that's so good though. Yeah, which is really good. But then I thought uh content of the movie, uh-huh. the the style of movie, and the age of the person now. Yeah. One hundred percent gonna come in every day and act the shit although he doesn't act i uh-huh. saw an interview with him this week that he says he doesn't act he, he's beyond acting he now just <laughs> Are is you to say christian bill no nicholas cage he said that yeah oh god this interview is fucking awesome you gotta you link to me watch to that it, shit yeah. right. but nicholas cage as jacob just makes I'm so much sense down with it i'm so down with it and we yeah. never i know how we talk about nicholas Man, cage all I the wish time, nicholas we never cage use was him t- was played richie in this movie yeah that would have been interesting. Him and clooney yeah god that would have been awesome dude but, but whatever. Nick cage in a, in a reboot in this would have been uh, him as Jacob would be fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For the reboot? Fuck yeah. yeah. I'm always down with Cage. I can't believe I keep forgetting him. Yeah. So I'm down I know, with Cage. I know, we never think about it because he's he's in every movie now. Well, he's <laughs> yeah, beyond so. acting. Though. Yeah, oh, man. That's why we don't think of him. Yeah. Um. Which I need to see Mandy, apparently. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. I've heard it's Whoa. really good. I, that and then Mom an and Dad. Ep- I need to watch on that. It. I think Mandy's supposed to be a horror movie, too. Uh. Yeah, I think so. I'm so is, saying, uh, it's he's also in the... He's also in the from the shadows of madness or the color of the it's some uh H.P. Lovecraft oh, okay. thing that he's in that I can't remember the so name. There's of one it. that just dropped on Netflix too that he's in where he plays a cop. It's like a murder mystery too. Yeah, he's, a, he's I mean, in he, a lot of he shit. makes like 15 movies a year. Yeah, he's um, also in the remake of the Left Behind things that Kirk Cameron did. Oh, no. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's go. Let's. He's let's also in a along. movie about the USS Indianapolis, made famous from uh, Jaws, the sinking of that with all the sharks. Really? He was in a movie of that, like that came out like last fucking year. Wow, that no one heard of. That's oh crazy. He's just doing shit. That's fucking so awesome, dude. He's he's not acting. He's being. He's being. Yeah. God. And you know what? Yes, he. Yes, is. he is. Yes, yeah. he is. Absolutely. And you're fucking All goddamn right. So right. bring it in a home with. All right, uh, you're Seth. Uh, Seth. All right, and so this is I I got someone. I, this is just an idea that I would just like to well, kind of see on screen. Yeah, and I so think wait, it might let me work. let me go first because I'm not in love with mine. Okay. All right. So thinking of, on the long lines of Jesse Plemons playing Richie, this probably doesn't work unless you give the line about different moms or something or different dads. Um, the and I kind of feel like he's a little too old, but he's not that old anyway. Pedro Pascal. Because he's just like he could look badass. Yeah, he could deliver those lines. That's and I, I mean, bad. I really like it. I really do like it. That's not bad. I like it too. But uh, you know, I don't. I'm a fan. Of, I'm a fan of his. He's very good. I like it. I think that's. I mean, but like you know, you go the way actually, he looks to like that a, with my that with Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf. I think is good. Yeah. But I just think here, that Jesse here was could I, do it better than Shia. Here was I, or here was my idea. Maybe dye his hair. Which I don't think you're going to like this. Okay. I'm just going to say that. But I'm thinking along the lines of someone, like with this movie with George Clooney. Yeah. Playing someone squeaky clean, kind of nice, suddenly just yeah, playing I, a real see, bad guy. I was guy. trying to figure that out too. And then also like trying to figure out a, a, like a current day TV person that would go into it but well mine's not a too. current day tv person right, tv so who, person who is it but i would say actually now i'm starting to think about that but no um joseph gordon levitt i wouldn't mind seeing with the tattoo and seeing if yeah, he, see if he can do pull really off. gritty yeah yeah but, i just and him yeah, and, and shia yeah, I just would keep look brotherly him, yeah and i just keep thinking of him like he's too little but like george clooney's not big right you know, it's it's how it's shot. Yeah. 
Yeah. And but you I know, think I honestly, like Pedro Pascal with Shia LaBeouf better. But yeah, but honestly, with with Shia LaBeouf and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you could almost flip flop both of those two. Right, and they could almost play who. both characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Certainly. not play both, but like either one could play Be either, either one. one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, think, I like. I don't, I don't hate I it. Think I think we got two separate. Pretty good, pretty good recast. The and there's only time. one thing we can do, right? Throw it up to the people. Yeah. You know. uh, the only other thing was, uh, you know, I wanted to say Danny Trejo has to be back. Oh, yeah, and he's going to play, yeah. Uh, but I think a lot of the various vampires in the place, so like Danny Trejo, make him Frost, you know, do, like give him a bigger part Okay. this time. But I think a lot of the various vampires in the 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 place should all be played by uh, WWE superstars. That would be tight. And then we also we also definitely know who's playing Sex Machine. Julian from Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. We're talking casting alone. Can like, not not have yeah, that. It looks yeah. exactly like him. Yep. So I think that's in, it. In fact, pretty much wears the same clothes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's it. I think that's it. Um, we went all, all, you know, over 100 minutes. Yeah, which so was, I think you know, some say to too long. Others say but, not long uh, enough. But, but then you're still listening to Rogan for three fucking hours, okay? Psh. <laughs> Dude, he's coming to Texas. Did you see, did you see yeah. the pictures of his studio in Texas? Yeah. <laughs> looks pretty. Dude, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Man. I want to do a podcast in that studio. Yeah, Just be for like, sure. yo, Rogue, hey, uh, take a hike, buddy. We're filming the we're filming the movie gap in here for a couple hours, okay, bud? You know? Yeah. Uh, I'll do it. But anyway. Okay. It doesn't so look as cool as ours, though. No. Nope. Can't beat this. Can't beat this. No. Nope. And uh yeah, but uh we already pretty much did plugs. If uh, if I do them now, nobody is listening anyway. <laughs> so uh, that leaves us with only one doubtful. thing to say: <gasps> Nom in space. <laughs>